Okay, so this is part two of the iMac no power repair. Previously, we diagnosed the board as having a heat spot in this area here. And I told you in part one that we have to remove the board and then inspect back of the board to see where that heat is coming from because I do not believe that the heat is related to the components on the front here. I took the board out, the motherboard. We want to inspect back of the board to see where the heat is coming from because I do not believe that heat is coming from front of the board. So we're going to have to see it uh, both ways, from the back and from the front. And this is the power supply that we replaced. Now, when the power cable is plugged in, we want to make sure not to touch this by accident because it happened once before. And I got a nice, refreshing jolt. So uh, let me plug the power cable in. And I got this fluke pen here that will tell us if there is any high voltage on this area of the board. So let me plug the power cable. Okay, power cable is in. And now look at this, it's high voltage everywhere. Okay, except this area where AC is being converted to DC, so there is no high voltage here. It starts from, from here. So as you can see here, we do have one light on the board. The one LED, the first one is on because we have the power cable plugged in. Uh, we want the second one to come on uh, because the second one relates to the communication between the power supply and the motherboard. The third one is if the GPU is communicating with the motherboard and the fourth one is if the screen is connected or not making a connection. Right now we only have the first light because we have the power cable plugged in. Now let's go to our thermal cam again. I have this board under the power supply because I do not want the power supply to touch anything else on the bottom. I do not know if there's anything conductive under the power supply, so just to be safe, I'm separating this and this. Okay, so now we have that cardboard under both the power supply and the motherboard. The, uh, these are the boundaries of the motherboard here. And I want to look at this area here that was getting hot yesterday, right over here. Uh, this here is not a heat spot, it's just a shiny object. If you tilt the board, it will go away, you see? It's a shiny object. So right now we're interested in this area here because that's what got hot yesterday when we did part one of the video. Let me turn the power button on. Let me go to manual mode. I'll raise the temperature boundaries to pinpoint where the heat is coming from and it's very difficult to pinpoint a specific component because heat is probably coming from back of the board causing the side of the board to heat up so if the short was coming from any of those components in the front then we could tell which component is getting the hottest but right now it's uh, vague I mean we are not able to tell which component is causing the short and that's why I'm thinking it could be a short from the GPU itself which is located on back of the board let's take a look under the microscope Uh, what I'm going to do is plug this power cable and we're going to put a few drops of alcohol in this area and there's no specific component that stands out. A few drops of alcohol here. Uh, nothing really stands out. I do not see anything obvious here except that the board here got dry really quick. Let's do one more drop of alcohol. You see how the board in the center or on the top here is drying up first? No specific component causing the dryness because the component itself would have dried out first. Let me unplug the power and test those capacitors in diode mode to see which one of those capacitors is possibly shorted. Anytime you have a short, it's mainly capacitors or ICs that are causing the short. Inductors do not cause a short and resistors, filters do not cause a short. So meter in diode mode, red probe on ground. And let's start by testing. Let's start from far end here. This is good. This is good. This is good. 
Okay, so we have a short here. Good. We have a short here. We have a short here. We have a short here. So you can see that most of the components on this side have a short. Okay, so. Okay, the short stopped right here. The short stopped right here. So all those components are shorted to ground. And down here. Oh boy, we have a short down here too. These two as well. This one is good. And this one is good. So we have about 13, 14 components that could possibly be causing the short. Right now, I wasn't able to find which capacitor is shorting out to ground by just looking at the thermal cam or even using drops of alcohol. So uh, we're going to flip the board to see what's going on on back of the board. Right now, the area that is shorted to ground is right over here right over here let's flip the board to see what's on the back so we're looking right over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to monitor the board under the thermal cam again while it's flipped i do not want the board to touch the power supply so i'm gonna have to hold it like this and then we'll look at it under the thermal cam like this So if we look at this area, is that visible here? Yes. Okay. So let me plug the power cable again, making sure not to touch the power supply. So the area I'm interested in is right over here. Let me go to the thermal cam. We're going to power on the iMac. Press and hold the power button. Okay, I'm not seeing any heat on it. Why? Hmm. I'm not seeing any heat. Uh, what's going on? That's weird. I'm not finding any heat spots on the back. Let me go back to the front. Any heat spots on the front? Hey, we're not getting any heat spots anymore. Okay, maybe the power button is not plugged in properly or it got loose. I don't know. Let me try again. Okay, so we have 18 volts here and 18 volts here. Let's say we test a point on the board, 57 volts. Okay, so 18 volts, we should be able to short those out with just tweezers. Okay, so weird. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, right now, I'm not even getting any heat spots anymore on the board, even when I turned the board on, nothing. Before we were getting a hot spot, now we're not getting any. The iMac power switch is working. I tested the continuity between those two points and I pressed the button and it beeped, which indicates that the power switch is working. 
all the cable connections from the power supply to the board are good everything is as is right now i'm not getting any heat spots anymore but the computer is still not turning on uh, let's try it one more time and look at that heat came back on i haven't done anything i haven't touched anything it just came on by itself let me flip the board quick so we can take a look at the back and right over here this is the gpu the short is most definitely coming from the gpu and we can pinpoint what part of the gpu it's that tiny part right here okay that's uh, the center of the gpu so as it appears here, there's a big chance that the short is coming from the GPU itself and we can pinpoint where that short is coming from, right over here. I mean, our only other option would be to try to remove all 13 capacitors from the back to see if we can release the short. Uh, and since we do not have a choice at this point, let's go ahead and do it. Remove the capacitors one by one and test for a short. So what I did is I removed every capacitor out of its spot and I put it on the side so we can test to see if we still have a short and after removing all of them we still have a short so this one was initially like this we moved it onto the side like this same with this one it was here I moved it down a bit keeping the capacitor stuck on one of the pads so we do not lose them same thing with this one I moved it up one step I moved it up one step moved it up one step move 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 so I removed all the capacitors that are a suspect in creating a short and we still have a short so right as of now we are ruling this to be a gpu issue because none of those capacitors are shorted to ground uh, let's test one more time we are in diode mode and let's test one of the capacitors here and if you notice we still have a short so unfortunately this board is a no fix it's very clear that the problem is the gpu the heat spot was coming from the gpu chip itself i removed all the capacitors from the back to eliminate the fact that it could be a shorted capacitor so uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the process. Even though it's no fix, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video. And before we end this video, we got a few packages today. This looks like a hard drive. It's an external hard drive. Paper doesn't say anything on it. It looks like the person did not fill out the mail -in form. They just wrote their name, address and email. That's it. It appears to look like a four terabyte hard drive, probably came in for data recovery. It's actually two hard drives inside one casing. This is connected in RAID. We've done a video on this before on YouTube. We will attempt this repair in a later video. We also got two Mercedes-Benz keys. Uh, honestly, this month we got over 40 Mercedes-Benz keys that needed coil repairs. And this one is coming from Massachusetts. Uh, they were sent with the enclosures this one is coming from dallas texas from max <laughs> another mercedes key uh, let's see what's inside this one here i need to get the box cutter oh i think this is the RM tweezer that we ordered. Oh man, this is one of the best tweezers out there. I have one here, but uh, it fell on the floor so many times and the tip got damaged. And this is a $45 tweezer. One of the best tweezers I've used. So precise and the tip is hard. It took a lot of beatings before it. This is not the tweezer, it's a solder mask. I wanted to try something different than what we have. I just wanted to see how they compare. I do have one here that's a black color. This is a green color. Uh, sometimes when I'm working on a black board, so a green one would be more suitable. Other times I use the black color, so I wanted to have both. I think this is the tweezers right here. Yeah, I'm 100% sure this is it because it's supposed to arrive today. Right there. Awesome, awesome. Awesome, right there. So let's compare to see the one that I had and this one here 
just want to show you the abuse that the other one took. So that's my old one. The tip is extremely fine. There's no tweezers in the market as fine as this tweezer here. And I have over 16 tweezers on the bench right now and none of them compare. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Look at how precise this tweezer is. Build quality unmatched. However, uh, price is not cheap, $45. But you know what? I miss this tweezer a lot when I started to work with other tweezers like Hako, Excelta. And you know what? I'm going to keep this covered when I'm not using it because it's very easy for this tweezer to fall and bend. And let's put it on the side. We got the Beats Pale speaker. We've done a lot of those on YouTube as well. Uh, probably a charge and port issue. And this one is coming from where? Uh, California. And it came apart like this. I did not take the support. I remember the customer sent an email asking, is it going to cost more to fix it because it's a part? We told them we'll do it at the same price now. But next time, do not take it apart. Mm -hmm.